<laughs> so how's this uh, this uh, bare knuckle uh, boxing thing you guys are doing? How's that going? It's they good. said we we'd work into that. that was yeah. I looked at my fist. And I'm like, <laughs> I could do two things. I could hit Don with it, or I could ask Ken about the bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that, that fist right there looks like a looks like a peanut. <laughs> Compared to that, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever worked with your hands? No, before? no, I've never ever have. I made some some tortillas yesterday, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Valor's been doing real well. I mean, we had to stop because of uh, COVID. You know, um, I was I've always been. Lo I love fans. I love fans to be in the audience, and so it just kind of even when I was wrestling, it just didn't feel right. And so we've kind of built a. Our, our valor more in the social media since COVID had hit, trying to build our platforms and, and our advertisements and things of that nature, and even trying to change the way we went at our first show. Even though it was a hit, there was things that we could improve on. So we did. We spent a lot of time on trying to improve valor instead of trying to just force shows to be put on. Um, and so now we're in a position now where we can literally start going out and actually finding venues to start putting these shows on. And we have a platform that we're going to use where we're going to start out with the one event and then the next event and then the next event. And each event is going to build up to the main event. So, we, you know, we're pretty excited about that and, and moving forward. So we'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, people look out for it, valorbk.com. You can find all the information out on that. And, uh, yeah, we're probably within the six months. Within six months, we'll be having our first event. Well, is it real bare knuckle fighting? Oh, it's straight bare knuckle. I don't like this bare knuckle and they tape their hands. It's yeah. like that's not bare knuckle knuckle right, right. <laughs> yeah that's that's a whole concept of yeah. bare knuckle is it learning how to throw a punch yes. without breaking your hand right. you know i yep. mean it, there's a lot more to it than just punches somebody you can't go in there and try for the knockout because you might not get it and your hands broke and then he's still standing you know or or he beats the count yep and then now you're you're stuck there with a broken hand your hand swollen up yeah. the size of a glove yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you gotta finish the fight yeah hey did or, you guys catch that what he's was was given the dates he's uh he's writing it down uh mr oh. severn's writing it down i think he wants to be at the tryouts <laughs> <laughs> what do you think dan well he wrote down the date no no look, no look, 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 look. okay no i <laughs> My, my question, my question was, my question was going to be when it comes to the the, the Valor uh, BK uh, shoot. Now I lost. Now I lost my thought. <laughs> yeah. you know, I was writing down my next question right there because as you as you come up with the Valor BK, I, and now you put me on the spot there, Mister Price. So. <laughs> Way to go, me. <laughs> I just, it looked like you wanted in on that bare knuckle. Uh, I better just boxing. sit back here and look, look pretty now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don, the door was left yeah, open. Yeah, like, uh, come on, man. I, that was Wake too up easy. over there. That was too easy. <laughs> I low hanging fruit. <laughs> let it go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let, let Hillary there just slide away. Ouch. <laughs> so, so, all right, so, so what are the rules, anyways? Um, what we tried to do is, is because boxing, I love boxing and I always have, I love yeah, footwork. Yeah. I love the, the fight, especially with the, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Duran, Hagler, all them. I love oh my God, the that's intensity. Amazing fights. Oh, those, those are so amazing. much different than, than now. Right. It's just yeah. different, but, but I love that type of boxing. And so with the Valor, uh, BK, we wanted to try to bring in a clean bare knuckle fight. Whereas that, you know, now they've got Valor Bear, or not Valor Bear Knuckle, but they got other Bare Knuckle leagues that are out there doing these fights, but they're allowing them to grab and clinch and punch and dirty box. And to me, I don't mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think that if we want to have guys go in there and actually fight the way you're supposed to fight, uh, then you, you can't have, especially when it's true Bare Knuckle, you can't have guys grabbing because then. Then you got problems with eye poking and eye gouging because you don't have gloves on your hand. And so, therefore, your fingers can get stuck in someone's eye. Uh, and and it, to me, by keeping guys fighting with their hands closed, so when you get into a clinch, you can't grab. So there's no, like in the regular box, where you get guys kind of hook you with a glove or this and that, and you can get into a clinch. It's like with us, it's just straight bare knuckle boxing. Whereas literally when you get in there, we're just taking the gloves off, and it's going to be boxing rules. So we like that, except for there's no clinching. You cannot, when you do get into a clinch, when you get in close, you can't grab. You got to punch out of it. Really? So 
I think that, that, that the fights are faster that way where they can't grab and hold and clinch. Well, yeah, because you can't hold your way out of a knockout. That's right. That's, yeah. that's, that's you get part hurt, of the game, grab. too, though. You yeah, know? but, yeah, well, you but get with, no hand, with, with no You're gloves on. Yeah, but with no gloves on, if you hurt somebody, they can literally tie you up like yeah. a wrestling tie-up. Right. So it takes away that purity of boxing and being able to get a knockout because someone, if they do get hurt, they'll grab you and they hold you yeah. and they got no gloves on, which they can hold you till they... So they literally get back their senses. And so that's why we wanted that taken out where there's no clinching. If you get inside, you got to be punching your way out. And if you get hurt, you can't grab them. So, Ken, uh, you got any names, big names, uh, crossing over from MMA into uh, the bare knuckle scene? Anybody um, we might know? Yeah, um, you got Mark Godbeer. He did a little MMA. He actually won the tournament. Uh, Mick Sweeney. Uh, he ended up getting knocked out by Lavar, who was another MMA fighter. Um, so, and then Mo, uh, he fought in it. Um, he he made it to the finals and lost to Godbeer, Mighty Mo. Mo the Wall. Yeah. So we had a lot of guys come in. I, I saw your uh, interview with him on that, uh, like Sports Center or whatever. I don't remember what it was. Do you remember what that was? It was a uh, uh, Boston's show. Oh man, that that was that was prime. If you. If you get a chance to go look at that, that was... Uh, I beat that poor kid up verbally. <laughs> verbally. Oh, verbally assaulted him, man. Uh, it was it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It was, he, I guess uh, he tells the guy, he tells the guy, you know, uh, that was working with me at the time, he says, man, I've never been beat up like that. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I, I come back, but he just... Tore me apart. <laughs> oh, it was it was one right after the other. Ken, you gotta you gotta was, check out that clip. He was on, huh? Yeah, it was, it was on. Yeah, I had a good day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took thirty five years, but uh, uh, yeah. every once every once in a while, one slips. Yeah, yeah, it's like an <laughs> that, eclipse. That's his that's his clip that he's gonna send to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. here's my footage. Here's my reel. <laughs> my highlight reel. Right. It's a slow day. For <laughs> I'm used to spot on. You know. All right. Yeah, well, that's that's one thing. You had to gift to gab, man. Gift to gab. Mm, oh, shit. Sometimes that gets me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it wouldn't matter. If it didn't get you in trouble, it wouldn't be worth anything. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Uh, so how's the, 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 the bare-knuckle fighting? All right, so are they taping it all, or you that's, just it's bare-knuckle? That's the unique thing about our organization is that um, I, I, there's, I don't want tape on the hands because yeah. uh, these guys all start like once it gets around the wrist right. and they want it on the hands. And so no tape, you don't get any tape on the hands at all. It's Not straight, the wrist, bare no straight bare knuckle because it gives you a false sense of security when you tape your, your hand, because it doesn't matter if you got tape on your hand. Right. So you're going to hit harder and you're going to break your hand. Yeah. So with no tape on there, it's literally pure bare knuckle. It's literally God given talent. You don't got any equipment or anything to help you feel like you can punch harder. It's just what, well, you don't want to punch hard when you're, when you're bare knuckle, because no. you break it so damn easy. Well, so the there's accurate. a technique and a style to where you, you, you knock them out without, damaging your your own self because you know you got to come out that next minute yeah you know? <laughs> and is it marcus of queensberry rules or what are the rules yeah it's basically um it's it's going back to the traditional boxing except for what we do is we're not allowing clinching to happen so if you get in close you can't grab them or cut lock you know tie them up right. or any, you can't you got to keep your because it's bare knuckle so your hands have to stay closed all the time so even when you're blocking, you can't do this. They have to stay closed. So that way, you, it, when you go to throw a punch, your hand shouldn't be open. So if Don't you happen to have your hands here and you do that, that <laughs> you know, oh, it was an accident. <laughs> yeah. So if you say, okay, the minute you step in there, your hands are closed. You cannot open them. Uh, and you got to fight with them closed. Even when you get close inside, your hands have to stay closed. And it eliminates that accident of somebody getting poked in the eye or somebody yeah. saying it's an accident. Um, and he, and it takes away a guy actually because they don't have gloves on. Now they're able to tie up with you and hold you and then recover if they get hurt. So by doing it this way, it makes the fight a lot faster. It makes guys have to fight. Right. Yeah. But okay. But is it rounds or is yeah. it Marcus Queensberry? No, it's rounds. Uh, so we, we, we start now we're doing three, three, three minute rounds. Right. So, um, it, and, and again, it's pure boxing. It's not the dirty boxing stuff where guys can grab you, hold you and hit you. 
Uh, and, and, and if you watch the fights, they're, as opposed to the other ones that are doing it, it's a lot faster when you don't let them grab, when you don't right. let them clinch. Right. Yeah. Takes that whole downtime mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah, it's fast, and that's what people want to see. And I think as a fighter, I think if you get a guy hurt, the last thing you want to do is be able to have him grab your wrist or grab right. you and hold you. You're like, come on. Like, it's hard enough with him with gloves on. Well, how many warnings do you get then? Uh, you get one warning. The next one is a point, and <clears throat> that's disqualification. So it's immediate. We're not allowing – because, you know, as a fighter, one time is still hard. You give him two, that's that's – that's a fight. That's you Especially being able to change the fight. Especially three rounds, you know. Yeah. Well, three minutes too. Like, yeah. you know, and winning the rounds too. You you know you got three rounds. If you if you lose two, last yeah, round so don't matter, right. Right? right? Hey, I wanted to go back a minute. Hold on. Is you said you you wouldn't hit as hard because you wouldn't want to hurt your hand. Right. I've only known one person that didn't have the opportunity to hit somebody, or should I say? had the opportunity to hit somebody, but didn't hit them as hard as they could for any certain reason. Would you ever not hit someone as hard as you could, yeah. whether you're bare knuckle or not? Oh, absolutely, because the difference is when you're fighting, it's, a smart, it's you being a smart fighter. Because the idea to hit somebody in the soft tissue area as they're moving is really difficult. So what you would do is you would be hitting the spot. As soon as you get them hurt... Then you throw hard because now you know you got them stopped, right? And now you can finish them. But as far as when you're starting to fight, you're finding your target, right? You're finding your target. You do that even in MMA with short gloves on. You're not throwing hard. You're finding. But once you get them hurt, you know you've hurt them. Then you go for the kill. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where the sweet science comes in, you know? Yeah. You've got to pick your shots. You've got to be intelligent about it, you know, And, and pick the placement, you know, Pick the 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 speed, yep. the power. You know, I mean, because uh, I remember in the UFC, you know, back when we were fighting, they were taping it up to one inch behind the knuckle. Yeah, I'm like, it's well, like what stupid. is that going to do? Yeah, right? That is completely like, stupid. Yeah, this is and I broke my hand. You know, still with the glove and the tape on. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's it doesn't make sense to get that security. You, and knuckles are still exposed. So right. you're taping behind the hand, and you feel like you can hit hard. Yeah. You can't. I mean, but, if you miss, you're going to hurt your hand. Yeah, you're not stabilized in anything. Right. You, you know, except your wrist, which, which is good because... It means you can actually break your hand because yeah. your wrist's not going to give out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you get that puncher's break right there, yeah. you know? So we, we had this, uh, this mutual friend, training partner, Crackhead steals his car. Finds the guy, gets hit by his own car, is riding on top of the car, <laughs> punching the guy through the window. He says, I had to not hit him as hard as I could because he was getting wobbly, and I didn't want him to crash my car while I was on top of it. <laughs> now, to me, that's, that's, that's pretty level-headed for that situation because I'd be like, want to kill the mother. Yeah. Oh, like, you're going to die now, man. <laughs> The second time, because I know he rode top the car when his uh, wife was cheating on him. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that was the same incident. That was the same yeah, incident. Yeah. Okay. Same incident. <laughs> oh, wow. This guy also uh, push started his truck after wow. his vasectomy. Yeah, he had a vasectomy <laughs> and he went out. It was a truck or Oldsmobile? <laughs> no, it was a truck. It was an old Dodge truck yeah. that didn't start. It didn't start. Start it. Pushed. Hey, <laughs> that guy's tough. Yeah, 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 tough. I guess, Super tough. Guy. I ain't gonna move if I think that's gonna get hurt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, he he missed he missed the the timing wasn't right, but yeah, he could have yeah. been a world champ. Oh yeah. yeah, he was he was five years too early. Yeah, like, mm. oh, just a, a stud all the way. I'm just. A caveman. He's yeah. a fucking caveman. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've seen a few guys that when I was fighting and actually met them where you knew if that if it would have come around earlier, they had have no question. Yeah. They would have been right in their, their their realm of of personality and character. Ken, what other projects do you have coming up? I mean, other than Valor Boxing here right now, are there any other projects that you have in the works? I know you you've written You've written at least what two or three books? Yeah, three books. Tell, tell us about the the, the books and uh, if you have what other projects you have coming up. Yeah, we got three books out. One was done the earlier Lions Den, and then another one kind of later in the Lions Den, and then the one that was most recently uh, put out. Um, it was written, and I and and the thing with the that one, the last one that was just done, was that I'm not a part of that book. 
And the only reason why I wasn't a part of that book was because I felt like, because he had actually um, written the book and then released it before I got a chance to proofread it, uh, which was just didn't, didn't, didn't make for sense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Everything in there is real. Like I'm not denying any of that stuff that happened because I'm transparent. I, I, I know what I did, but the, when you read it, it looks like that everything happened while I was fighting Dan and while I was fighting you and while I was fighting all these people that I was just partying and that the lion's den was all about partying and no training. And that to me, it felt like that, no question, but that's just not the real story. The real story is, is that there were times that I, we trained hard and then there were times where I had issues in my life where I went out and I just was irresponsible and did stupid things and things that had happened in my family. So all these things, the, the, the stories in there are all true, except for they were put in the wrong places. Like they just looked like they were all run together and like it was just from one from the beginning to the end, it was one big party. And if you know the accomplishments that I had in fighting, I don't think anybody's able to accomplish what I accomplished doing what they seem to think I did the whole time. It's just not possible. And so that's the only reason why I didn't step in and really support the book, not because it wasn't true, but because I believe that the, the timing and that when the things happened were not very clear and when they happened, how they happened. Yeah. You should let, let you proofread it. You know, right. it's my book. Right. Yeah. So I kind of stepped away from it because Jonathan Snowden is a great writer. I mean, and, and he did a great, great job on the book as far as the content, but it just would have been nice if he would have allowed me to say, dude, it didn't, that didn't happen there. That happened here. Right. That didn't happen there. That happened here. So that when people read it, they're not getting a misconception about who I am as a fighter and the hard work that I put in to train and the actual Lions Den fighters. Um, the way it's written looks like it was just a big party. And to me, that did it disjustice. Makes a better Hollywood story, though. Yeah, huh? right. Exactly right. That's, right? What, that's what it yeah, is. That's exactly what it was about. It was about just entertainment. Didn't matter about when it happened or how it happened, just that it was entertaining. Period. Didn't even change the names to protect the innocent. No, <laughs> and, and I didn't want that anyways because I was very transparent. I told him, talk to whoever you want to talk to because he was not going to get the stories unless I gave my permission because all my guys called me and said, hey, this guy wants to talk to me. Is it cool? I said, yeah, absolutely. Tell him the truth because this is about more of a, a story about uh, obstacles, things that I went through, and then how I overcome them. So it, it, we got to have the bad parts in order for people to see the good stuff. No. So it wasn't like I was, I wanted them to hide it. I wanted the, I wanted them to tell the truth and they did. Like I said, the only problem was that I think he, he, because of COVID and because of the time he wanted to get the book out while people were still at home and Although staying at home. I have nothing to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I have nothing yeah. to do. I'll just buy his book and read it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yep. Try, try yep. to try to, put it together in my format you yes know? yeah and how he wanted it to be written in a way to where it was it looked like it was a mess and right. because it seemed like that's more entertaining rather than and i don't think it would have made a difference if you would just made sure that it, there was breaks in between and that it was more it wasn't so confusing about where it happened how it happened it just it was just kind of all of it just flows together and it's like man that's a long career that i had so it didn't happen like all of it happening one chain like a chain party chains <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh yeah i can't party tonight and then he went out and fought and won and then he started party it's like man there was so much that happened in between that that caused me to do those things and uh, those things were never really talked about uh, uh, of how i was led into those different situations yeah, there's some things you want to forget. You know? Yeah, but but again, like I said, I was I was down for the truth. Uh, I just wish it would have it was it would have been done more in a, a time of when the time frames were, how and why those time frames and how it happened in those time frames, rather than it just all be running together. Right. So, um, man, it's been awesome with you three guys here. I'd never never dreamed. Never dreamed that this would happen, you know, back in the day, right? You know, yep. I, I, by proxy, I spent a lot of years Rich, hating, hating Rich, you, you know, Rich. by proxy, man, Rich. seriously. Right. 